Hey guys, it's Ted Bogart with the Ted Show, last show of the day. Excited to have these three young powerhouses on the Ted Show today, coming to us from Miami. Uh, very, very excited to have Bethany Martinez, Kevin Purcelli, and Peter Ortega on the show. Um, talk to me. Tell me about you guys. I know enough to be dangerous. I know that you're all three powerhouses. I know that you uh, all have built your businesses. You all have great success in your organizations. Uh, but I don't know a little bit of the backstory. So why don't you tell us? Somebody's got uh, one of the other things live at the same time. So just put the volume down on the second thing. Um, and we're good. Bethany, I always got to start with ladies first to so tell us about you. Hi. Well, Hi. I'm a real estate agent here in South Florida. I'm also the president elect for 2020. I will get to work alongside Peter, who is our president, and he's doing such an amazing job. Um, I started an organization called Females for Profit. I'm all about empowering women to make more money and do more in business. I've learned to merge those two worlds with my real estate. And I'm super thankful because Freedom, the home team from Freedom Mortgage was actually one of my main sponsors for my Females for Profit event this year. So I'm honored to be on the show and I love working with you guys. So thank you so much. Awesome, we love working with you. See, this is good. This is collaboration. All yeah, right, how about, how about you? How about you, Kevin? Tell us a little bit about you. And yes, I'm looking so to my name's make Kevin sure it's Percelli. live. I'm the executive for Miami YPN. Uh, I'm the person behind the scenes more. I'm the glue that keeps the, the YPN mosaic together. Um, I got my start in broadcast meteorology, believe it or not. And I met this meteorology woman chasing her to South Florida. <laughs> um, we're, we're no longer together now, but um, I have this amazing job with um, some amazing colleagues and Peter and Bethany and yourself. And um, I'm very thankful for Freedom Mortgage as well. They were a great sponsor for our RE Bar Camp last year. They came out and kicked it with us in Key West. And um, they've also hosted a bunch of great networking events that I've attended myself and have been able to build great relationships with Ronnie G, Joey Tags. Uh, mortgage muscles and uh, way more many people that I wish I could say right now without uh, insulting anyone. I'm sorry, whoever I forgot. I appreciate every single one of you. That's awesome. Thank you. See, I didn't even ask you guys to be all sweet and gracious about the home team. That's very sweet. We did it. All right, Peter. Peter, last but not least, Peter um, Ortega. So my name is Peter Ortega. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, um, moved to New York City because LA wasn't big enough. Um, so I wanted to experience that. Um, I've been in Miami now for 10 years. Um, and as Bethany said, I'm the 2020 YPN president. I really enjoy being a part of this organization, um, not just because we have the privilege to meet great, um, talented uh, partners, like yourself, Ted, um, but we have um, been able to grow this little community of agents that is an out of the box thinking group that can definitely execute at the drop of a dime whenever someone throws an outlandish you know, idea our way. That's where we um, seem to thrive the most. Um, we do know how to party. Um, however, we also know how to give back in a big and meaningful way when people are in need, you know, and, and that's, that's who we are. And, and I feel really privileged to be a part of this organization, like I said, just because of the people that we get an opportunity to network with. So thanks for having us on the show. I'm very excited to have you guys on the show. I have to say that there's a lot of people on the show who won't know what YPN is. So I didn't give them a point of reference. Uh, do you want to give them an idea of what YPN is, Peter? Sure. YPN is the Young Professionals Network. We we are an official board. We are actually the only YPN board throughout the country that has a seat at the table. So whenever we uh, make big decisions in South um, Florida, Miami, uh, just in case um, your viewers don't know this, um, the Miami Association of Realtors is the largest association in the country, second largest in the world. And we're fortunate enough that we have a leadership that really values the young professionals input. Um, so we get we get a seat at the table and we help to um, craft new policy and decisions for all of our members throughout South Florida. And it's part of the Miami Realtors. That is correct. So you got involved when, Bethany? You're the president-elect, correct? Yes. 
Okay, so that means that I am like vice president, and next year I'll get to be president. <laughs> but it's the organization itself. You have to have an eight. I want to just establish like the parameters of the group, and mm -hmm. then I want to take a deep dive into out of the box thinking. You have to be under a certain age to be part of the YPN board. Under forty. Yeah. Yes. I uh, so uh, are you addressing this to Bethany? Yeah, I can um, I can answer the question. So in order Please. for you to be on the board, you have to be 40 and under. Um, in order for you to be a YPN member, you just have to be young at heart, right? So you, anyone can be a part of our organization. Um, and that's really a, one of our, our secret ingredients is that our membership really spans from young to really seasoned um, in this industry. And then Kevin, what's the role of YPN in the overall organization? Um, I mean, there's there's a couple roles, uh, but our main one is education. We're an education centric organization. That doesn't mean that we can't have fun. Um, but first and foremost, our message is to find cutting edge technology, find a new methodology to to implement your business. And we spread the good news. People come gather around. We have a good time afterwards. And uh, some great relationships have been made in the process. I think sometimes, uh, just like we do with our clients, we share, we solve problems. And in return, we get things back. And that's exactly how our organization runs. But instead of, um, you know, customer to provider, it's just peer to peer. You know, we're, we're not really giving each other business unless it's a referral sort of thing. But um, we're here for each other. And there's a great sense of community with that. And, um, and this is our fourth year, I think, together between Peter and Bethany. And um, I can't tell you sorry, how sorry. just much we've grown together leaps and bounds throughout the years. And, and that's part of what this organization is about. You know, um, a lot of people are just getting their start in the industry when they join the organization. But by the time they're um, ready to move on or continue to grow elsewhere, they are a completely different person. And we're very prideful in the fact that we've been able to help them out along their way in their journey. Awesome. I'm going to give a couple of shout outs. Um, Joe Tag says, what's up, Peter, Bethany, and Kevin. Brandon, hey, what's hey. happening? Hey, Brandon. Um, I have to ask, Joe Tags told me that you this is the best YPN chapter in the country. He might have said world, but I think he said country. <laughs> he was uh, right. Bethany, he was right. Bethany, why do you think, what, it, what makes this chapter, what makes the way you all run things differently and makes it that have that kind of reputation and that kind of good uh, sense out in the community? Well, I think it all starts with the fact that we have an amazing association all together. The Miami Realtors Association is one of the largest. And when we're out there in the community on these trips, meeting with other associations from other states, they are truly looking at us like someone they want to be, you know, someone they want to grow to. Other than being the largest, I think we have probably the most influence on our community as a whole, like real estate, the industry, how we operate, you know, they look to us for um, advice and, and just guidance. And so it all starts with just our board is amazing at what we do, right? I don't know how they do it, but then it trickles. It, I'm telling you, like I seen it firsthand this year being president elect, Peter told me he's like, just sit back and watch. People, random people are gonna come up to you and be like, wow, like, how do you do what you do? And I'm like, what did I do? Or what did we do? But it just is like, we have such a strong, any realtor in South Florida should be so lucky to be a part of the Miami Association because of everything that they've implemented and everything that they fight for and how much like value they add, right? And, and then that's where it starts. And then they allowed us to sit at the table and actually be a board. And that we're the only ones that have that opportunity. So you have a lot of YPN networks and groups within other associations, but none of them actually sit at the table as a board member and get to have the rights to make these powerful decisions in our industry. And our board allowed us to do that. So because of that opportunity, anybody who sits on the YPN Leadership Council gets to feel that. And I feel like from the second I got involved with the YPN, real estate started to make a lot more sense to me. And I always say this, like, I feel like I'm a part of a big family now and I understand why I do what I do. Because there's some people that just want to sell, but then there's some people that really want to get involved with the community of real estate and understand how we can do what we do and how we can do more. And that's when I felt complete, like as an agent myself. So I think it's, we're the best because of 
the opportunity that we've had and we continue to grow and give back and we're constantly educating other YPN networks on how to do what we do and influence their city and their chapter. So I think being leaders, giving back and sharing what we've done so that others can do the same. That's what makes us great. Love it. That's awesome. And I, I want to piggyback on that. Uh, Peter, well, I pulled out of the box, I think direct, I mean, I cheated and went to uh, everybody's uh, portfolios uh, or their, their LinkedIn or their somewhere and found some kind of quote, but out of the box, I think I pulled from you. And I just want to say, um, want to ask you about collaboration and out of the box. What Bethany was saying is that you guys have such a big collaborative spirit there. Um, a lot of times people in the same industry, it's all competition. And we talked about this in an earlier show, but why do you think that collaboration uh, is such an important part of what you all do? You know, there um, there is a saying out there that, um, uh, and, and it, I just lost it. It'll come to me. Oh, here it is. So <laughs> if, if you if you want to go fast, you go at it alone, right? And if you want to go far, you go together. And our motto through YPN has always been, you know, hashtag together we're better. Um, and so what I, what I would encourage every single realtor out there is that if you are afraid to collaborate with another professional real estate agent, then you're in the wrong business because you, there, any transaction that you close, there's always multiple people that are a part of that transaction. And when we find that there's an issue in our industry or if there's a success story, we will share it with each other. We will try to come up with a solution. And what it does is it really helps every, there's 21 board members on our YPN board, and it really allows everyone to learn from some of our mistakes, um, to improve on policies that are out there. So everyone should really consider being a part of an organization. It doesn't have to be YPN, but you better join YPN because <laughs> this, is, this is where all the magic happens. Kevin mentioned that we are education-based. We do have a lot of fun, but we're also very politically savvy. We have a lot of connections and um, feelers out in our communities. And so um, to me, it's just really important that we continue to convey that message. Why should we continue to network with other real estate agents? Well, I'll tell you that we end up getting so many people coming down from as far um, north as Tampa to come to our events. And who are the people that we're going to be giving those referrals to is going to be the agents that are coming down from other markets that don't service Miami. So when they have a lead, um, we're the first ones that they think of. So this is your opportunity to grow your business tenfold um, by being a part of an organization such as ours. That's awesome. I agree. I think the collaboration is key. People have to get off the competition bandwagon as far as working with other people. And I just think it's so so important for us to kind of, especially now, come on, this is a great time to build the collaborative relationships and really think mm -hmm. outside the box like you guys do. All right, Kevin, I'm going to ask all of you this, but I'm going to start with Kevin. Uh, you're all young, hence YPN, younger, let's put it that way, uh, young at heart, but you're successful. So as a young entrepreneur, as a young, successful uh, professional, Kevin, uh, what do you attribute to or what kind of characteristics or what kind of things uh, did you do in order for you to gain that success uh, so early on? It's um, it's one part consistency, one part creativity. Um, first and foremost, you got to be posting every day. You got to consist consistently be putting yourself out there. Um, the creativity helps, but, you know, not every idea is going to get a thousand views, um, but it's important that you put it out there anyways. And you'll be surprised. Sometimes you'll, you'll find something that you don't think is going to be a hit amongst your audience and it ends up blowing up and then vice versa. So it's important to constantly put stuff out there. It's important to um, leverage your connections. Um, that's pretty much all I do. I get the amazing talents of Peter Ortega, Bethany Martinez, um, and every other uh, member we have on the board and even some that aren't even on our leadership board, but are uh, very active members of YPN. So as long as you get the creative juices flowing and you're consistently putting something out there, you have really nothing to lose. You can always pivot. Um, you just gotta, you just gotta do it every day. Or I, for me, five times a day or five times a week. <laughs> but um, it's it's something that you have to continually go in with a with a clean slate every day. Short term memory sometimes because you're gonna do things that you're not maybe proud of, or there's gonna be that post that you thought was gonna be amazing and you end up hating yourself over it. But 
Um, you know, you got to have the mindset of a quarterback, short-term memory. You might have thrown an interception uh, last series, but this series you might throw a Hail Mary and have a huge touchdown. Excellent. How about you, Bethany? You're a rock star real estate agent at a young age. Tell us how you got there. What was your, what do you attribute or some of the things you attribute your success to? Uh, well, it was a few and I say a few because it was really hard to find people that were just going to give me knowledge and indication and or just answer the phone, you know, and it started off with someone who was the president of the board introducing me to YPN and sort of being a mentor and just whenever I had questions would answer and kind of guide me through things. And there was like a few other key people that I could connect with that either supported me or, you know, when I wasn't making any money, told me like, stick with it, it's going to happen. So I would like to say like having a huge support system and finding those mentors that are going to guide you along the way. And then truly like, you know, just staying focused and sticking with it and getting around the right people, you know, being involved with the board gave me a ton of support from so many different brokers and so much advice and just kind of keeping my mindset right. So it's like, I needed to hang out with realtors who were doing it and were making it because those were the ones that were gonna empower me and tell me you got this. A lot of my friends that were working just regular jobs were like, you're not making any money, go back to a normal nine to five. <laughs> so like, it's truly important to watch your circle of people that you're around and making sure that you're putting the right knowledge and the education and and personal development i got into personal development when i started real estate i didn't even know what personal development was i'm talking about like the the morning miracle and 10x and just every book that you can think of i started reading and then it made me realize like in order to be a business owner entrepreneur and as a realtor you are your own business owner you really need to know yourself and work on personal development and those are all things that i say i worked on i got around the right people and those are the things that propelled me to even continue to do real estate beyond two years you know See, and that, then that's excellent i think that that one the one point that resonates with me that you said is that you it's all about who you surround yourself with so if you're if you're in a group or on a team or with a company and there's a lot of people who aren't doing what you want to do and you're only hanging around them then of course you're not it's going to be very difficult for you to get past that like you said it's your circle you want to you want to yeah. hang around people who are going to motivate you and lift you up uh, rather than bring you down or uh, are the naysayers. Go back to an old job. It's not what you want. You don't want to do that. No, I, that's All why right. I left, you know. All right, Peter, uh, out of the box. Tell us you are. You also are a rock star real estate agent. Um, tell us what you attribute your young age success to. Yeah, so uh, I just want to piggyback on some of the stuff that Bethany was saying because she's absolutely correct. When you get into this business, a lot of times um, you're expected to be a, a surgeon, right? Right out of um, going to real estate school. And unfortunately, you end up having to learn on the job. And it's really, really challenging because you don't even know where to start. One of the um, things that I knew that I needed to work on immediately if I was going to stay in this business was to surround myself with like-minded people, people that were already doing really big things, people that had a proven tax track record. And so a perfect example that comes to mind driving up to um, Tallahassee, even driving down to Key West for a District 4 conference, I was fortunate enough to be in the car with three top ladies, top real estate ladies in um, on our board. One of them is our immediate past president, Wesley Uoa. And then of course, we had um, Julie's Realty was on there as well. So it was really fascinating to be in a car with these power and Joanna. Joanna was also there. So three female rock star brokers with a ton of agents in their office. So as I was sitting there, I was helping them draft some contracts while Wesley was driving. But it just exposed me to so much more. It was like a crash course. Um, it was like getting a PhD, really with these incredible women where they were problem solving and putting out fires with their agents. You never get that type of exposure or education unless you're in the middle of all of it. So I, I always look at um, five, the top five people that I hang out with. Are they smarter than me? If they are, I'm in the right group. If they're not, maybe you have to revisit your social sphere. Um, but I never feel like I'm the smartest one in the room when I'm surrounded by our entire um, YPN board because everyone yep. brings something different to the table. And to me, that's really where, where I think a lot of us have been pushed out of 
our comfort zone um, to think outside of the box to improve our business. And to be honest with you, um, I think my business, I, I know that my business has nearly um, improved and I've challenged all of our board to double their business to this year. Um, this was prior to COVID-19, um, but I still firmly believe that we can make it happen um, by simply just making our care calls and make sure that we're genuine and uh, genuine and authentic when we're reaching out to our database. I love it. I think all of that's so important. I think people are looking for ways to maneuver through, to figure out what to do, to, to figure out how to either maintain or grow, because this is a great opportunity. It may be uncomfortable. I mean, I'm in my bedroom right now, if you can't see. Um, you know, you, that's your you bedroom? Just, that was good. I've got the freedom stuff behind me. Uh, but you know, you, you have to figure out a way. You can either look at it as the worst thing possible, or you can look at it, okay, here's an opportunity for me to do the care cares calls, to do to do to show people to um, show them your vulnerability, your authenticity. Really, really reach out to people in a meaningful, impactful way, which it sounds like all of you do. I have to ask because a lot of people ask this when I posted about the show. They want to know maybe a minute or two of what you feel like the real estate uh, world is like right now, and what you think is coming up. Start with you, Bethany. Well, I think a lot of those things that we used to feel like we could do in person, we are realizing that we can cut time out of the equation and we don't necessarily have to meet with someone in person. We can take the technology route. Even though I'm a very, you know, traditional girl, I want to do that face to face. But, you know, we've got to move with the times. And as YPN, we're all about leading in technology. So I think this was a great opportunity for those who maybe didn't want to take that route to be forced into learning how to jump on Zoom calls and learning how to, you know, do everything virtually. So I feel like that was something great that that came out of all of this, right? We're all Love getting, it. we're all dying to get back to, you know, our in-face person to person, but I'm always on the road and I feel like admin work was my downfall because I can never get the time to get behind the computer and do the things that I needed to do without being tired or at the end of the day. So not having to drive in Miami traffic to commute from place to place and showings and things like that. I mean, we have sellers cooperating with virtual tours. We've got people buying property sight on scene through Matterport and, and you know, all of these virtual tours that we have now. I mean, that's, that's amazing. I hope that some of these things carry over into this next chapter, you know, after all this, because if we can do it now, why can't we do it then? We're learning, we're adapting, we're growing, we're applying technology. And I think it's just going to make us better, you know? I agree. I think it broadens it. It gives us one more avenue, one more platform, one one more opportunity uh, to serve people that maybe we didn't serve in the past because we were stuck in the traditional way. How about Absolutely. you, uh, Peter? Well, I, I'm pretty optimistic, right? I look at the numbers that our association is posting and the numbers are favorable to real estate um, agents. So what I would challenge people to do is don't use this as a staycation, use this as an opportunity to continue to connect with all of your database. I, I posted um, some of the new numbers in Miami data. I think we had about 611 new listings that just went, um, that just came live as of the last seven days. We're closing transactions. Um, yeah, it's, it's becoming a little bit more difficult, but I think the agents that are actually putting in the work today that are following a schedule, that have a business plan, that are still doing the activities, they have nothing to fear. Um, it's going to be those partners or agents that are not really waking up, following a schedule, making those care calls that might not be here um, once we reopen. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty what's going to happen um, once the economy reopens. I am confident that we will see our numbers skyrocket and all those agents that I just discussed um, you know, or described, the ones that are making those phone calls, I, I think we're in a pretty good place. Um, who doesn't want to live in sunny South Florida, right? Um, and <laughs> Miami is really the, the best place to live. Uh, I agree. How about you, Kevin? Um, so I'm not really going to talk much about the, the current situation. Um, everybody's situation is a little bit different. Uh, Peter and I have been giving uh, food away uh, through food pantries and things like that. And we're very lucky that we're on the giving side as opposed to the receiving side. Um, I know it's tough for a lot of people out there, and I know that there's a lot more questions than answers still, and we're a month and a half, two months into this madness. Um, but here's what I do know for sure. 
is that as soon as the, uh, the green light is given, everything that has been kind of building up over the past few months is going to fly out of the gates all at once. And that makes it that much more important to have a plan and to be yes. ready for all of this. Because um, if you are using this like a staycation, I haven't. I know Peter and Bethany haven't as well. But um, one, for the people that have, there's still time. Get a game plan together. But um, it's it's about to be very intense. And business is about to move um, at the speed of now, as our chairman likes to say. Um, so I think um, if you're not ready, get ready as soon as possible. Because um, business is going to get back to normal. It will be a, different in a few ways, especially in restaurants and other places at first. Um, but I think people are ready. Um, obviously, people have shut down state capitals already. Not that I condone this. But, um, you know, people have been asking their governors to get back to work. And um, each city is going to have a different solution to the problem due to the uh, due to the current situation. Um, but one, do it carefully and cautiously. Do not put yourself or others into risk. And two, um, like I said already, just be ready for uh, for everybody to be ready to open up their business again. And um, hopefully you'll be ready for uh, for everything that's about to occur. It's about to be really great second half of the year, I anticipate. Yeah, I, I, agree. I can just add one more thing. Yes, please, 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 I please. I think there is a shortage of well-priced um, properties, right? Um, there is no shortage of inventory throughout South Florida, especially not in the condo world. So this is an opportunity for most agents, um, for all agents that know they have an overpriced property to have a serious conversation with their clients. If they are interested in moving those properties, they have to get real with pricing. Um, so this is an opportunity for everyone to, you know, sit back, um, look at their inventory and if their properties are not moving they've been sitting idle for a long time this is a time to have a serious conversation with their clients and say hey it's time to really um price the property right where it needs to be um, you know this better than anyone else um, the second that someone is you know requiring a mortgage what are we going to do we're going to go ahead and get that property appraised so let's make that happen agreed awesome. all right one last question i have i ask everybody uh, totally personal, not too personal, but totally personal. Um, I want to know, people want to know what you're doing to, everybody's doing to stay positive, what you're doing to stay creative. And this is self-care. This isn't necessarily business related, uh, how you're working on your marketing plan and that it's, what are you doing? What are you physically or mentally doing to really try to stay focused and stay upbeat? Uh, I'm going to start with Bethany, please. So... I've been taking on a little, uh, like a few projects that I wouldn't say are necessarily real estate related that are more like motivational and empowering. I'm leading a course that's talking about how to come out of like the next 90 days, you know, living like your purpose and your dreams. Um, and then I also picked up road biking. I have a friend and a group of friends that they all road bike and they're you know they're like obsessed so they kind of got me hooked on it and I've been riding like 20 to 30 miles in the morning and that's that has alone has changed how I operate in the day I'm not gonna lie I could be like at a super high peak of happiness and positivity and then all of a sudden just be like what the hell am I doing you know but <laughs> being able to Working out my balcony wasn't cutting it. Um, so picking up a new hobby like road biking and just exerting all that energy and those endorphins are flowing has really got me in like an extremely positive mood as if I couldn't get any pos more positive, right? But, um, <laughs> and then leading certain groups, like I took on leading the book club and then I gave myself a few responsibilities that allow me to show up every week and be a leader and be a presenter because whether you're having a good day or not you got to flip on that switch and you got to lead and you got to show up and deliver and you know guide people so i gave myself a few of those roles and those have really put me in the mindset to say no bad days today because today you got to show up and deliver so but it's important to be selective and it's important to know because you can fall into the like a saying yes to everything and then all day long you're on zoom calls that actually aren't productive for your business so yes. like at the same time while saying yes to certain things, I'm saying no to others because I'm truly trying to see what is going to align for me right now that coming out of this, I have put all the pieces together and I focus on the things that really are going to produce like the life that I want and income. So, cause there was a lot, I don't know about you guys, but there's like an invite here an invite there, a zoom call here, a zoom call there. And I, the first week I found myself 
busier than I've ever been, even when we weren't in quarantine, where I didn't have a moment for myself. And I was completely drained at the end of the day. And I'm like, and I didn't leave my house, there's a problem. You know, so then that's when you got to cut it all back and say, like, what do I really want to focus on that's going to take me out on the other side? And mainly, yes. you know, that's good for my mental health and good for my business. So those Excellent. are the few things that I've done. Excellent. Excellent. How about you, Kevin? Um, you know, I've been pretty consistent, which is good. I, not much has changed in my life, to be honest. Um, one, two things. Bethany nailed it on the head with biking. I, I'm a runner myself. Um, I think cardio is a essential thing to have right now. One, when you're running, if you have a problem, you're going to be thinking about it on your run. Mm -hmm. You might be experiencing some, some aggression. You might be experiencing some creative things to say to whatever problem you might be encountering. Um, and it kind of gives you that balance, right? Because if you're feeling that aggression, you know you probably shouldn't act upon that aggression. You should probably table it. And unless you are just completely backed into a corner, would you ever consider some of that aggression? Then maybe. Uh, hopefully nothing at all violent. But um, it's good to kind of go through the motions, get the blood flowing, ponder about a certain thing, and then potentially come up with a solution. Or if anything, just sleep on it for another day and run again. And eventually, I think you'll come to uh, some sort of enlightenment about how to deal with the situation. So that's one thing. Um, this organization has been my other big outlet. It always has been. Um, I spend a lot of hours in the office. Nothing has really changed. But what's really exciting about our organization right now is um, because everybody's inside, everybody has more time, maybe for a Zoom call, maybe one of our Zoom calls, we've got a little extra exposure in this whole ordeal. And so I just hope we're delivering a quality product that gives people the uh, the need and desire to come see us again once everything goes back to normal. Excellent. Amazing. I love it. And Peter, we'll wrap it up with you. Tell us what you're doing for self-care. So for everyone that's known me all my life, they um, they know that one thing I absolutely detest is working out. But over <laughs> a year ago, I um, actually um, had the privilege to support one of my um, really good friends at Move Live Lift. He started a CrossFit box here in Brickell. And so I start off every single morning at 6.30, from 6.30 to 7.30 with a, with a workout. Um, and they're not easy, but it really helps to recenter myself. Uh, it helps me have a little bit more clarity. And the reason Kevin and I have started um, feeding over 700 families every single Saturday for the last two um, Saturdays in a row is because, as he mentioned, we are pretty privileged. Um, and I do feel like we have an, op an obligation to give back to people. So giving back and feeding all those families really re-energizes me to continue to do more um, and, and continue to do better in business so that when I do better in business, I can also give more back to the communities that we serve. So working out and doing something productive by giving back in a safe manner is um, something that, that I've been working on. You know, uh, just to wrap it up, you guys, uh, when Joe said, hey, I wanna have these people on, uh, that I hadn't met or talked to before, you know, I'm always a little bit, a uh, little trepidation there because you never know what it's going to be like and what am I going to get? I, and then I, I have to spend 30 minutes trying to figure out how to fill time. Um, and you guys are really amazing, genuine, generous, grace, gracious, uh, insightful. Um, really, really appreciate you guys taking time today. It was, it was really, really excellent. So thank hey, Ted, you. Hey, Ted, I got a question for you before you go, man. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it, it lies in with you plugging us. Now we got to plug you back. You know, you, you talked about, you know, what, uh, what makes it people for people to come to our organization? Um, you know, tell us about Freedom Mortgage, man. Why, why is you, why are you working for the best mortgage company in the country? <laughs> That's an easy one. So, uh, you know how you feel at home at YPN? This is the first, I've owned businesses, I've owned my own companies, I have never really worked for a corporation where uh, they actually really do care about what happens, not only to their clients, but to their team. And so uh, having owned four insurance agencies, multiple title companies, I know what it's like to be the owner in the position. And we have all the way up to the very tip top of Freedom Mortgage, we have people that care about everything that we do all the way down to the processor or the person who empties the garbage in a building. I, they really do have a genuine care for what happens and they really do want to get the best deal for the borrower. And when you throw all of that together, uh, it's just, it's home. It feels like home. So when Freedom reaches out, when they say something, they mean it. 
Uh, they, they really do love the people that they work with, their referral partners, their loan officers. Uh, and it's just, it's really a wonderful place to be all the time. Plus, who else would it be creative enough to let somebody like me, who's a loan officer, not have to originate, but to do ambassador kind of stuff like this? I mean, they, they're forward thinking in everything that they do. And you can see it in the way that they market, the way that they build relationships, the way that they take care of their, their borrowers and their clients. And so I can't say enough positive things about it. It'll be two years for me in May, at best two years ever. It's amazing. So great question. Awesome. All right. So how do people reach you best? Go to MiamiRealtors.com slash YPN. Is that the best way to find the three of you? Probably Instagram, actually. In uh, okay. Go to our, at yeah. Bethany at Martinez, Miami YPN, PA, um, and then at Miami get, YPN. Yeah, Bethany, also, you're you're killing it on Instagram. And then Peter, after after Bethany, go ahead and tell the world your Instagram handle in case they want to follow you. I love watching your stories almost every day. <laughs> Bethany Martinez, PA, on Instagram. And I mean, if you go to the Miami YPN page, you'll be able to find us all on there. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I and tagged all of you, I think, on Instagram. Correct. Um, so you can find me at, at Peter Ortega Realtor and then at Kevin Percelli. Just, uh, just follow Miami YPN for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you follow Miami YPN. Kevin's so modest. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Have a Thank wonderful you so evening. Much I can't wait us. to come to Miami and see all of you guys in person. Ted, yeah, come down. We'd love to host you, man. Really. I would love to be there. All right. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.